Okay, we're here today on realagriculture.com with uh, KB Takeda and Eric Van Deest of Trimark Engineering. Welcome, guys. Thank you. Today we're going to be talking about uh, anaerobic uh, biodigester systems and some of the benefits and some of the issues around them and things that uh, they could do for the not only Canadian agriculture or North American agriculture, but uh, the general population. Okay, so first guys, what is a biodigester anaerobic system? Basically, it is a system whereby you bring in uh, organic uh, materials that otherwise don't have any use that are being landfilled and you, through mixing in a very specific way, you bring that to a big uh, silo type of uh, digester and then under anaerobic conditions, which means uh, without oxygen, you digest it and, and convert that into energy through the, the gas, the methane gas that uh, is freed up. And that methane gas is then uh, used in uh, power generators uh, that then again create electricity and uh, some of the heat that is being created at that point in time is also used for uh, heating either from uh, homes or institutions uh, nearby or uh, within the same industry. On the other hand, you will also produce uh, fertilizer from that uh, same uh, source uh, that again can be used on the land. Uh, and. On the other hand, you have uh, water that is uh, clean water that is being produced that either goes back into the process or has other usages uh, and is totally safe. So what kind of feedstocks will we be talking about? Um, so the feedstocks, uh, as Eric mentioned, we're looking at uh, organic feedstocks. So they can range uh, anywhere from uh, municipal waste um, to uh, for applications, agricultural applications could be uh, manure, and for uh, industrial ac applications, uh, we're looking at uh, food plant uh, waste is, a, is another good example. So that could be uh, potatoes or other vegetables that uh, are a waste product from a processing facility. So uh, what countries in the world are, are, are kind of on the leading edge or have these sort of systems uh, in place? Uh, mostly Europe, uh, Austria is, is very strong and you know the plant we visited in uh, Italy is uh, Austrian design but in general uh, almost every single little village in Austria has some kind of a, a system whereby they will use either the wood and uh, generate heat with it or have uh, digesters or other forms of uh, converting uh, agri agricultural products into useful energy. So why is, uh, in North America, why are we uh, you know, a little bit behind places like Europe in, in this sort of application? Uh, my belief is that uh, you know, the, the environment and also the conditions under which the Europeans live there, you know, the high density population and less available land makes it a necessity to find solutions uh, also as they uh, mostly don't have their own energy sources so they don't have the petroleum uh, right uh, under their uh, feet so to speak they need uh, some other energy sources and uh, they're running out of land to put the waste anywhere so they have to come up with solutions while here we still have lots of available land that uh, allows us to be a little uh, less uh, picky in, in many ways. Uh, so I, I think those are the basic uh, reasons okay. and, and maybe also foresight from the politicians uh, looking further ahead rather than the next quarter or the next mm -hmm. uh, fiscal year. So is your belief though that these sort of systems do have an application in North America? Absolutely. Uh, there is no other way. Uh, the pressure is on on a worldwide scale to to come up with solutions uh, everywhere and it only makes sense uh, if we want uh, to avoid climate change to take care of those things. So what are the, what are the possibilities then that you see for, uh, for North America with these sort of systems uh, eventually becoming reality? Well, um, 
you know, the, the biogas systems provide really two, uh, address two key issues. You know, number one, um, in, in terms of reducing energy requirements, so by um, uh, running these generators and, and producing electricity, um, we're offsetting uh, other dirty uh, sources of, of uh, power, whether that be from coal or other uh, sources. And then, in addition, the biogas technology provides an opportunity to address uh, potential uh, issues around uh, pollution, as Eric sa said, and climate change uh, specifically uh, relating to uh, landfills. Uh, so instead of diverting waste to landfills, we can divert it to these biogas facilities. And in the example where we're using manure, issues relating to potential issues relating to the handling of manure and the quality of the groundwater and so forth can be addressed by diverting uh, that waste stream to the biogas facility. So really these self-contained or uh, fully integrated systems would have real positive environmental impacts potentially? Definitely. Absolutely. Okay. So what are, you know, and with a lot of these leading edge technologies, whether it's uh, biogas or at one time, you know, ethanol, um, and as ethanol moves into cellulosic sort of methods, cost. Uh, and efficiency is always the issue. So, in terms of biogas, what are what are the plant costs and some of the infrastructure costs? I think that depends uh, very much on the local conditions, and it's hard to give a number because you know that may be misleading one way or the other. So every case has to be identified and analyzed uh, on its own merits, uh, and and that's why. Trimark Engineering uh, with uh, embassies would like to bring a uh, small scale pilot uh, scale plant here and then do some testing uh, with different industries, uh, local industries to see uh, what really works. Okay. Well, you guys, thank you very much for uh, joining us today. Thank you. Thank you.